because confidence is a skill. Now, if you're shaking your head a little bit, let me define confidence and why I believe it's a skill. Confidence is simply the belief in oneself and one's ability to succeed. It's what I call the belief of success. And it happens through consistent, planned repetitions. And what I often see in underperforming leaders isn't a lack of talent, but no, a confidence gap. A tired bird landed on a branch. The bird rested, enjoying the view from the branch and the protection that it offered from other dangerous animals. Just as the bird became used to the branch, the support and the safety that it offered, a strong wind started blowing and the tree swayed with such intensity that it seemed that the branch would snap in half. But the bird was not worried, for it knew two important truths. The first truth, even without the branch, it was able to fly and thus remain safe through the power of its own two wings. The second truth, it also knew that there were many other branches upon which it could temporarily rest. It had confidence. Now, I get asked all the time about my former life as a golfer and what really separates one junior golfer from another junior golfer or what separates one college golfer from another college golfer or what separates an average amateur golfer from a great amateur golfer. And my answer is never the technical skill of just hitting the driver far. What separates golfers is one thing, confidence. Now, when I'm asked to help turn around an underperforming manager, the first thing I evaluate is confidence. And the reason that I evaluate confidence is because without it, you can't lead others. It's a little bit like a car engine. When you push the button to start your car, you don't know every detail about how that car works. But it's painfully obvious when the car doesn't start. And much like a car that can be fixed when it doesn't work, so can confidence. Because confidence is a skill. Now, if you're shaking your head a little bit, let me define confidence and why I believe it's a skill. Confidence is simply the belief in oneself and one's ability to succeed. It's what I call the belief of success. And it happens through consistent planned repetitions. And what I often see in underperforming leaders isn't a lack of talent, but no, a confidence gap. They don't have enough consistent planned repetitions to believe in themselves enough that they will be successful in the role or the job. So they assume they've hit some ceiling of their achievement and they're constantly looking for approval from others about the job that they are doing. Here is where it gets really honest today. When someone is lacking confidence, they stop taking action. And this crippling doubt sets in. When there is no action, there is no consistent plan repetitions to have a belief in being successful. And the spiral really starts. And what leaders have to do is they have to take the advice from Theodore Roosevelt. He said, each time we face our fear, we gain strength and courage and confidence in the doing. 
Now is the time to step into your role as a leader. You are in this role for a reason. You haven't been fired yet. So you might as well step into your role. And know that through consistent, planned repetitions, you will get better and your confidence will grow. Now, anyone who has built confidence through consistent plan repetitions is susceptible to that confidence transforming itself into cockiness. And cockiness will cripple you as a leader. In fact, cockiness will set you further back from being a more confident leader. Cockiness comes from masking what's really going on inside. It's bragging or showing off without actually having the skills or the know-how to back it up. It's fake. And if people hang around you long enough as a leader, which is a big if, the truth will come out. It's just a matter of time. If you are ready, For your competence, not cockiness, as a leader to grow, I want you to focus on two things. First, words matter. The words that you say to yourself are the most important words you say. I ingrained this in my kids at an early age. I just want you to remember... I just want you to remember... That the words you say to yourself... That the words you say to yourself are the most important words you say. <laughs> the most important words you say. Be kind. Be kind. Say good things to yourself. Say good things to yourself. Go ahead and give yourself daily declarations of encouragement. I want you to really say things to yourself like, I am good enough to lead. Because of my faith in God. Whatever your daily declaration is, the key is for you to come up with your own daily declaration and eliminate words that cause doubt in yourself. Don't say things like, I'm going to try or I hope. Instead, I want you to use words like, I am going to or I will or we will. Small changes in your words will go a long way. Second, I want you to persevere when you struggle. Since confidence grows through consistent plan repetitions, I am amazed at how many leaders fail or struggle at something one or two times and they assume they aren't good enough. Do you realize that Abraham Lincoln lost eight elections before being elected president in 1860, eight times he lost. But he continued to have a belief in success that started internally. He persevered because of it. Look, competence is crucial. So don't fall for the myth that it is something that you are born with. It's built by consistent planned repetitions. So focus on the words that you use and persevere when you struggle. It will help you step into your role like you never have before.